I'm Maddie, and today I'm on a quayside. The quayside is a place where lots of ships stop to unload things onto land. How many ships can you see? One, two, three ships. Ahoy! There's a big ship coming in now. Every day, lots of ships from all over the world bring things we use all the time, like food, furniture, and even cars. And it arrives on enormous ships like this one, in huge metal boxes called shipping containers. But how do the shipping containers get from the ship to a train so they can be delivered all across the country. I think we need something very big and very strong to do it. Let's find out. How does it work? A shipping container. This shipping container is 12 metres long. That's almost as long as a bus. But to move a shipping container this big, we're going to need... A shipping crane, and they are huge. Along here, there are 15 shipping cranes, and they all help to move the containers off the ship. Look, can you see that? There's one up there. Wow, it goes so high up. The cranes grab and lift the containers onto the quayside. Once the shipping containers are on land, these enormous trucks called straddle cars move the containers into this area called the terminal. Just look at it! It's like a giant robot dog! Next, a truck called a reach stacker stores the shipping containers on top of each other. It's like building a tower out of monster stacking bricks. It is busy work. Next, we need to get the containers from the terminal over here to the rail cart that's just over there. But how are we going to do that? We need this, a gantry crane. Let's take a closer look at this one. The gantry crane looks like a bridge sitting on two tracks, like train tracks. This part is called the cross travel lorry. Hanging from the cross travel lorry is the cab. This is where the driver sits. When the driver presses a button in the cab and moves the joystick, the cross travel lorry will move forwards and backwards along the track. When the driver presses another button, the crane moves across from left to right. Underneath the cross travel lorry, there is a big metal drum which has eight steel ropes wrapped around. At the end of the steel ropes, there is a special frame called a spreader, like a big crab claw. The driver unwinds the ropes and lowers the spreader over the shipping container. It fits on perfectly. The driver presses a switch which locks the spreader onto the shipping container to make sure it's safe to move. Then the driver moves a joystick to wind up the steel ropes and the shipping container moves across and along the track. The driver presses another button and the steel ropes unwind. The shipping container is lowered safely onto the rail cart, ready to move onto the next place. 
that was amazing. I've bought my special camera and I'm going to attach it to this container so we can see what it looks like when this gets lifted from here, the terminal, up and over there to the rail cart. Okay, let's go. Whoa, look at it go up. And I'm going up there to see it all in action. Look, I've also put a special camera in the driver's cab. Can you see how high up he is? It's like the driver's in a fishbowl in the sky, <laughs> looking down at all the containers below. Can you see how the steel ropes are being wound up to lift the container higher and higher? Next, as the driver pushes the joystick forward, the container moves forward too, over there onto the rail cart. These containers can weigh about 30 tonnes. That's the same as about 20 family cars, but that's no problem for a gantry crane. Oh. The container is nearly on the rail cart. All it needs to do now is line up the four corner pins of the cart with the pins on the container. And listen carefully. Clunk as the container lands on the cart. Brilliant, the shipping containers are now ready to be delivered across country on the back of a train. I think shipping containers are amazing. What was your favourite bit about seeing how shipping containers work? Can you remember the name of the big trucks that looked like giant robot dogs? They're called straddle cars. Did you like the sound the shipping container made as it fixed onto the rail cart? the shipping container went when it was picked up by the gantry crane. I wonder what's inside these shipping containers. Maybe they're full of boxes. Have you ever had a box delivered? It's exciting, isn't it? I wonder what's inside this box. Ooh. Oh, look! It's a piggy bank. But did you see how it arrived safely? That's right, it was wrapped in this bubble packaging. It's like a blanket covered in lots of tiny cushions. But each cushion is filled with air. Can you see? And it makes an amazing sound. Listen. Pop! <laughs> but do you know how bubble packaging is made? Let's find out. How is it made? Bubble packaging. To make bubble packaging, we have to start here, in a bubble packaging factory. Here, they make more than enough bubble packaging to cover 30,000 football pitches every year. That's a lot of bubble packaging. Packaging is made from a material called plastic. We use plastic to make lots of different things, like plastic bags, shampoo bottles, and some toys. Bubble packaging starts here, inside these huge containers called silos. Inside the silos, there are millions of tiny pieces of plastic, and they're called pellets. They look like this. <laughs> wow, that is so satisfying. Can you hear that sound? That's the noise of the plastic pellets being sucked through these pipes as they're carried from the silos into the factory. Here, the 
pellets are delivered from the pipes into these tanks called hoppers, where they're held until they're ready to go and get heated up. Look, can you see the pellets falling into the hopper? tube is called a screw and barrel and inside those plastic pellets are spinning in a spiral pattern and as they move along the barrel they're getting heated till they're really really hot and runny. It's warm, I can really feel the heat. The melted runny plastic is then stretched into a thin film which rolls out onto these metal cylinders. You can see it just there. It looks a little bit like cling film, the stuff you wrap your sandwiches in. But how does that flat film get its bubbles? Well, this is the clever bit. And I've got my special camera so we can take a closer look. Wow. Look, can you see how the metal cylinders are covered in little dimples. The plastic is sucked into those dimples, making lots of little bubble shapes. Now, another layer of flat plastic is quickly put on top. When the two layers stick together, one flat, one bubbly, the air gets trapped inside. are then spun around tubes into big rolls. And sealed in plastic. There you go, it's all bagged up. But I wonder where it's gonna go next. Let's find out with my special camera. It's a journey, isn't it? Here you are! It arrives in this enormous warehouse. Look at all this bubble packaging, rolled and ready to be sent out across the country. So, there's only one thing left to do. Check it's got some air inside it and give it a pop. And did you know that once you're finished with it, you should be able to pop it in the recycling with your plastic bags? I loved seeing how bubble packaging was made. What was your favourite bit? Can you remember the name of the plastic bits that went into the big bins? That's right, they're called pellets. Did you like the sound of the bubble packaging popping? And did you see how the two layers of plastic came together to make the bubbles? So the next time you get a box delivered with something wrapped in bubble packaging, like my piggy bank, then you know how the bubble packaging was made. And now you know how shipping containers are moved from ships to trains by massive cranes. I'll see you next time. There are lots of things.